Welcome back guys, this is part 4 of our Revit Basic Wars video series. If you haven't seen parts 1, 2 and 3, then be sure to check those out and subscribe for more regularly released Revit content. So now that we have our walls in place, we have some decorative features in place. Let's really get down into the detailing of the walls. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the combined wall. So I'm just going to select that wall and press the delete key. The next thing I'm going to do is revise the reveal to brick dimensions. So I'm just going to scroll down in the list for the profiles and then under the wall reveal squared box, I'm going to right click that, go to type properties and the height I'm going to do as 900, which is more in keeping with UK brick dimensions. Okay. So on the elevation for that, it nicely lines up with the bricks at the bottom and nicely lines up with bricks at the top. I'm also going to copy both of those so press the tab key, hold control and press the other one and then I'm going to go to the plan and then I'm going to mirror them from the center point of the floor. So that will be on both flanking walls to the sides. Next thing I'm going to do is enclose my space so I'm going to go back to the floor plan. I'm going to add another wall in place. So I'm going to select our typical wall. I'm going to set to create similar. And then I'm going to draw that in place. And that's inside out. So I'm going to select it and press the space bar. And that's flipped it the correct way. One thing to note is these flip arrows always point to the exterior side of a wall. So that's one indicator if you had, for instance, a solid wall. You want these flip arrows to be on the exterior or outside of the wall. The next thing I'm going to do is add a, another level in place. So let's go to the section button, which is up here on my toolbar. If you don't have that up there, then you go to view. And then under the create panel, you have section there. So I'm going to draw a section in place and right click and go to view so now i have a section and i can draw a level so for levels we go into the architecture tab and then under the datum panel you have the level function there so i'm going to draw my second level in place let's set that at three meters above and at default revit has called that level two so that's okay so now that I'm on level 2, I'm going to change the detail level to fine. And then I'm going to scroll down to my view range in the properties panel. Select edit. I'm going to change my cut plane down to, let's call this 500. And then I'm going to change the bottom depth to unlimited and the view depth to unlimited to, and then OK. So now I have my level two. I'm going to go back to the, under the architecture tab, I'm going to select floor. Then I'm going to draw my basic floor on top of the structure that we currently have. So that's gonna be from there to here. Then I'm just going to use the align tool, which is under the modify tab, align. And then I'm going to tab and select the face of that block work and then the line of the floor. So that seems to work okay. One thing I'm going to do for this one is change this to concrete. So I go to edit type, edit the structure, go into the material, and then I scroll down to concrete, cast in place concrete, and then okay. Okay, let's go back to level one. And what we're gonna do is realign our linings so again we go to modify align then you can tab and select the face of the wall and tab and select the other face of the wall and then that lines up like so now with this wall you know that we previously joined this lining wall to the exterior brick and block wall and that automatically cuts out any openings within that lining. So when I align this now, and there you go, it's cut that out. So one more thing, I'm just going to select my column 
and the 2D rainwater pipe and the lining and then I'm just going to move that up to sit on that line there and then I'm going to follow the lining around the wall so the next thing I'm going to do is look at this in our 3D view so in the 3D view we can see that the wall linings aren't correct in terms of their height each one of them has a top constraint which is unconnected and with a height of 4 meters. So what I want to do is attach each one to this new floor that we've created. So the function to do that is called attach top base and it's up here on the modify wall panel. So if I select that, then on the properties bar you have attach wall conditions for either the top or the base. So the top is selected now, so now I can select my, my floor. Now what makes it tricky is you need to select the edge of the floor. So I'm going to quickly switch to wireframe by pressing WF and then I can select the floor. And then I can go back to consistent colors and you can see that that wall has now attached to the base of that floor. So I'm going to do that for all the remainder of those walls now. And so all of those walls are now attached to the base of this floor. So if I select this wall here and I temporarily hide it by pressing HH, you can see that all of these lining walls attach to that floor. So one more thing I'm going to add whilst we're in this 3D view is some more decorative features. I'm going to add some crenellations to this wall here. So to do that, I'm going to use the edit profile function, which is right here. So you click on that and then you have a outline of your wall. And what you can do is modify that outline in any shape that you desire. So I'm going to select the pick lines tool and I'm going to change the offset to 300. And then I'm going to select my floor slab. And then that will be a datum to draw my crenellations in place. Okay, now that's done, let's go back to our plan. And what we want to do is revise the wall type at the ends. So what I want to do is create a double brick wall for this section here and for the other side. So what I'm going to do is use the split tool, which is under the modify tab and I select split. And then I'm going to split this wall in that location there. And then on the other side, I'm going to split this one in that location there. Now, this doesn't need to be 100% accurate in terms of where this line is because we can come back and revise it. So I'm going to select both of those walls. And then I'm going to go to Edit Type, Duplicate. And then I'm going to call this wall 3, Double Brick. And then I'm going to go to Edit the Materials. I'm going to select the brick, I'm going to use Control C and then wherever it's block work, I'm going to Control V to paste that in place and then change that to 102.5 as well and select OK. So now we have that wall in place, let's play around with the graphical standards. We can select the newly added wall, then we can just adjust it very slightly by pulling the end node and Revit automatically gives you a join condition. Let's do that on the other end. I'm just going to edit that slightly and Revit automatically gives you a join condition. The next thing we're going to do is select the wall joins tool under the modify tab, which is in this location here. And then we're going to select our junction. Now this tool is useful to quickly cycle through different variations of your wall join conditions. So at the minute we are on butt join and you can cycle through by pressing next to see what other conditions this wall has. 
You also have the option to use the mitre tool, which isn't applicable for this join. But you can cycle through that one and you can see that it does a mitre joint within the walls. And you also have the square rough function too, which you can also cycle through. But we're going to use the butt join condition and we're going to cycle through And we're going to use this condition here. So let's do the same on the other side by selecting the junction, leaving it on butt, and then going next until we get to our desired condition, which will be that one. Now, this is almost the condition that we want. In reality, we would want the bricks to return into each other and the cavity will join through. Now the next thing we're going to do is resolve the wall condition at the other end of the wall that we just drew. So because the garden wall is joined to that wall, it's affecting the join condition. So what we want to do is unjoin that wall. So if we select the garden wall, we can right click on the wall end node and then we can go to disallow join and with it not joined, we can pull that back and you can see the wall join button when you zoom in. So I'm just going to align this to the face of that wall and then I'm going to pull that wall out and then I'm going to go to the wireframe mode and then I'm going to align the end of that wall with the face of the garden wall. So the face of the garden wall, end of that wall and then leave it like that. And then I'm going to do the same for the other side. So select the garden wall right click the end node go to disallow join pull that back and then select the align tool select the face of the garden wall and the end of the other wall and then i can go back to my hidden line mode and so that's somewhat resolved the wall conditions the remainder of the wall conditions can be resolved in our 2d callout so one final thing in the floor plan that we want to look at is the graphical style. So let's turn off the thin lines and let's zoom into a junction. So let's zoom into where our column is. So what we want to do is make sure that anything structural is a slightly thicker line weight than anything else so that it stands out as being a more solid element. So let's go into the visibility graphics in the properties panel and let's check what the object styles are for the walls. So this is the default object styles throughout the view and this applies to all of the walls in the view. So let's click on that and open that up. Now we can scroll all the way down to walls and we can see that the line rate projection is set to two and the line rate cut is also set to two. And the same for the hidden lines and the common edges, they're all set to two. So that's our basic wall line rate. So the next thing we want to do is go and select this cut line styles box here and then we can go into edit. Now if you recall earlier we have our wall made up of multiple different layers and we can select a different function dependent on the layer. So the structure is currently shown as 5 here, substrate is shown as 5, thermal layer shown as 5, finishes and so on are shown as 5. What we want to do is modify these so that they are separate line weight. Let's change the substrate to three and the thermal air layer can be one and the finishes can be two. And when I hit apply, you're going to see that anything on the structural layer is gonna stand out a bit more. So apply. So now we see the walls have been modified. Let's do the same for the structural columns. So I select the structural columns and under the cut lines column, I'm going to override that and I'm just going to override the rate to be the same. So that will be five and that's overridden the wall and then we can select OK. Now for the wall lining, note that the plasterboard has also been modified to be a thickened line weight. So let's modify that layer. So edit type, go into the structure and I'm just going to change the plasterboard to finish two and then select OK. So the new wall that we drew, let's modify that one as well. 
I'm going to edit type, edit the structure, and let's change this to finish one and okay. So now we have our raw structure standing out. Let's go into the tagging and the information side of things. So we go to annotate, you can go to tag by category, and then we can tag one of the walls by selecting it. And because we are using a default template, we can click on yes and we can load the tag. So under the annotations folder, we go down to tags and then we can scroll down until we see the wall tags. So we have a tag which is triangular and it has the type mark or we can have a tag which tags the mark and the fire rating. Let's go for the type mark and select open. And then we can tag our walls. So remember that we are currently using the separated wall method. So we have a wall for the exterior side and we have a wall for the interior side. So we can tag each wall as independent objects. Now one thing about tagging your walls is that you cannot tag the same wall twice. So if I tag this lining here, I cannot then tag it again. I have to tag something else before I can come back and tag the lining. That's one thing to note. So let's delete this one. Let's move this one across. And now we have some wall tags in place. Let's go about putting some information in. So if you select one of these tags, you note here that it does say type mark in the name. If it's not in the name, you'll need to go into the family and see what it is referring to. So let's go and do that now. If you go into edit family, now in the family, you can select the label and then you can go to edit label and that's using the type mark parameter. If you are creating new parameters, then those would appear in this list. We'll wait for a future video where we discuss tagging on the floor plans. So now we know type mark is what's being referred to. Let's go and put some type mark information into our walls. So I select one of the walls. This says wall two. So let's go with that. I go to edit type. I scroll down in the properties down to type mark and I'm just going to call this W2 and then hit OK. And you note here because of the wonders of using Revit and Vim, all of that wall type throughout the project is now taggable with W2. Let's now look at the aligning wall. So I select the lining, edit type, I scroll down under type mark. Let's call that IW5 and then select OK. And again, all of those walls have been tagged and the information carries across. So let's add the information for all the different wall types. So now all the walls are tagged and that information carries through regardless of where I use this wall in the project. So let's go to the section view. And this view is also quite reasonable when it comes to the detailing. So what we're gonna do now is go to our section view and do the same thing. So section one. And let's tidy up some of these junctions. So let's look at the floor slab interface with the wall. Under the modify tab, we can select join. We can select our floor and then we can select our wall. That cuts that out on that side. And then we can do the same on the other side. So join, select the floor and then select the wall. So that cuts the floor out of the wall. So that joins the geometries together and that tidies up that junction. Let's look at the base junction. Now what we want to do is extend the brick down the face of this slab. And to do that, let's pull the slab back a little bit. So let's go back to the plan. Let's select our slab and go to edit boundary and let's pull that into our structural line. So let's use the align tool tab and select that structural wall and then select the sketch line and then do the same on the other side. So I've just done that on three sides. The other side I will leave open as is and select the tick. Now back to our section view. 
and let's edit the wall so that the brick layer extends down so we select the wall we go to edit type we go to edit and we extend our preview and make sure it's on section and then we go to modify and we zoom in we select the brick and then we unpin it depending on your screen and resolution you might need to zoom in and out to unlock this so i unlock that and then i select ok and now you have this function here which is the base extension distance so we can give that a value so i'm going to go for minus 300 and that extends that layer down so that is a instant parameter so what we need to do is apply the same thing on the other side well let's go to the other side let's select our wall base extension minus 300 and that applies to the other side so what about the tagging we can do the same in any view so we can go to annotate we can go to tag by category and we can select our walls again so we have the exterior and we have the interior and the same on the other side exterior and interior now one thing about tags is they always select the center of the wall so for instance if i wanted to align this interior wall tag with the exterior wall i will try and move it but it's attached to the center so if i press the arrow keys that's always going to be attached to the center so what you want to do is go to the properties and change it from attached end to free end and now that it's a free end you can move that up to align with the exterior tag. Another thing to note is you do have the drag end point, but only at the center. When you change that to free end, you have that drag end point at the end and the center. So let's also align that approximately there. And that's the end of part four of the Revit Basic Walls video series. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more regularly released Revit content and I'll see you in the next one.